Hello, welcome to our Year 11 virtual information evening. It would have been really good to have parents and students in school to talk about the next term and the terms ahead, about mock exams, about teacher assessed grades and about post-16 destinations. For obvious reasons, it's not quite right yet, but we look forward to hopefully seeing you in person and following the mock exams for parents' evenings. In this video, I'm going to talk about mock exams, I'm going to talk about teacher assessed grades, Miss Finlay, Head of Year 10 and Head of Year 11, is going to talk about revision strategies and how parents can best support their students in the forthcoming weeks and months ahead. And just as importantly, Mrs Linham, Assistant Head Teacher for Personal Development, is going to introduce parents to all the work that we are doing with Year 11s about post-16 destinations and the exciting opportunity for some students to join a satellite SIG form between Malmesbury and SWR schools. First of all, I'm going to talk about mock exams. Um, on the 30th of September, the government did confirm that GCSE exams would be going ahead for Year 11 students in the summer of 2022. This is definitely the fairest and best way to grade students. So therefore, the forthcoming mock exams are important practice for the GCSE exams in the summer. Mock exams will be taking place this term between the 29th of November and the 10th of December. Teachers in classes are already preparing students with revision strategies and encouraging them to put together and produce their own revision timetables ahead of the mocks. Students have also been given a revision programme of different sessions that are going on in school to support students in getting ready for these mocks. In addition though, Schools have been asked to put a contingency plan together just in case examinations are cancelled due to COVID or individual students are unable to attend exams and we're being asked to make sure that parents and students know how we as a school are approaching teacher assessed grades. I will be forwarding a, a document very soon which will confirm all of this in writing. However, we have identified three points across the rest of this academic year where students will know that that assessment is counting towards a teacher assessed grade, meaning that that work will count as evidence towards a portfolio in case schools are asked at the end of this academic year to submit grades for students because exams can't go ahead. The first teacher assessed grade window is the mock exams coming up on the 29th of November. Teachers will be telling students what part of that examination is going to count towards teacher assessed grades. We have a second window which will start on the 28th of February, which again will be formal exams in the examination room, which again parts of those assessments and exams will be um, teacher assessed grades as well. And we have a third window at the end of April, which may be formal exams, may be class-based assessments, depending on what has changed between now and April. It's important that students know that the amount of work that we can assess for teacher assessed grades cannot exceed the amount of examination time that a student will have. Therefore, if you would have three hours of examination time in your GCSEs, that's the only amount of time that we can use for teacher assessed grades. Perhaps more importantly right now, it's really crucial that students know that the, the mock exams in assessment window two and assessment window three are really important. And that if they don't attend those exams, then they run a risk of some potentially being awarded a U grade further on at the end of this academic year. Of course, access arrangements will be in place for those students that require that um, support, quite rightly so. And we will, of course, give other students opportunities to resit exams if they were unable to attend for genuine medical reasons. Some subjects have what we call non-examined assessments. A little bit like coursework back in the day when we were doing older framework GCSEs. Subjects like art and design, music, English also has a non-examined assessment. The government have made it really clear that these components must be completed this academic year. So students should not prioritise teacher assessed grade exams over their NEAs. They should prioritise both because they are both important components of those GCSEs. So please don't go thinking that they do not need to be complete. They absolutely do. 
If you have any questions about Teacher Assess Grades or the forthcoming mock examinations, please don't hesitate to contact me in reception, uh, myself or Miss Finlay, and we will happily provide you with any answers to any queries that you may have. Again, I wish our Year 11s the best of luck in their forthcoming mock exams. I'm sure that they will be hugely successful, and I look forward to seeing you at the forthcoming Parents' Evening in Term 3. I'll hand over now to Miss Finlay. Hi, my name's Donna Findlay and I'm the very proud head of Year 11. And I'm going to chat today about some things which I hope will help you support your child in the next few months, particularly when it comes to revision and support. In my opinion, it is important that students, teachers and parents work together as a team to ensure each child achieves to the best of their ability and is supported when needed. This is why we always encourage discussions with parents and also ask parents for support and to support us and our policies in Year 11, which can be a very stressful year. And we want it to go as smoothly as possible. This year, we launched the SWR Student, an idea of what qualities we believe SWR students should have. By Year 11, we expect students to have mastered or have nearly mastered the following skills which will help them in their studies and in the next stage of their education or employment. Achieving excellent punctuality and attendance, displaying positive behaviour at school, being able to organise their time, being able to ask for help, knowing they are not alone, setting goals for their studies and being inspirational and developing resilient skills. All these are key to having a successful year and also elements I review when writing their references to support their college, sixth form or apprenticeship applications. Therefore, parent support in ensuring students meet these expectations is important and appreciated. Helping Year 11s reach their potential and remain happy learners is our priority. Therefore, we offer support in many ways. Tutors. Each student has a tutor that they should know really well. The current Year 11 tutors are fantastic and know their tutees well and are also experts at mentoring students through Year 11 and they also do some revision work in those sessions. They also have personal development sessions. These educate them about a range of topics essential for Year 11, including mental health awareness, dealing with stress and particularly ex exam stress, dealing with setbacks, revision skills and post-16 options. We also have an excellent careers advisor come in to speak to all students and we take them to colleges and sick forms as well as getting representatives in from different schools, colleges and places of work to speak to them. And when it comes to stress, emotional behaviour issues in school, we have an excellent pastoral support team who will support students with any problems they are having. Many offer revi revision classes in and after school and these are the current ones in the run up to the mocks. These will change each term and more sessions may be added. What can you expect this year? Well, students, when you already know that when it comes to studying, it will be hard work and stressful at times. And it's important to find ways to ensure you cope with the workload and also the stress. We have already done some work on this in school and we will continue supporting you with this. Parents, your children will be dealing with their hardest academic year yet and will need your support with that. The good news is you don't have to be an expert in any of your son's or daughter's subjects to make a real difference. And you don't have to become a super parent by giving up your own life and responsibilities. You just need to be there for them. You can't revise for them, but you are crucial in ensuring their home revision is a smooth, calm and successful process. If we look at what makes a good reviser, you can support them to be just that. If you look at this PowerPoint, we have some ideas about what makes a good reviser and a poor reviser. So from this, you should be able to see that you should provide them with a quiet place to revise and provide any books they need. Check their revision timetable and exam timetable, and you can support them with their organisation. Ensure they eat, sleep and relax well. Help them cope with any setbacks and ask if they need support and reward if possible. The feeling of getting results they deserve in August should be a really good motivator, but in the meantime, parent rewards can be a good motivator and be patient and supportive. They're going through a lot and may be more emotional, stressed or argumentative than normal as they deal with this. They will appreciate your supportive words and also help and motivation if they face any setbacks. 
So when it comes to revision, we advise them to start early, make a plan, use revision methods that work for them, believe in themselves, ask for help if they need it, use past papers and use active revision. When we talk about active revision, it's about making each revision session count. Students, when they revise, like to highlight things, and this is great, but we need to make sure that they're also learning whatever they revise by using other techniques to learn the information or develop skills. If we link that to the core subject of English, we teach students by regularly going back to revise or relearn information. With revision, we encourage them to use techniques to retrieve information, and there are a series of ways to do this. And today I'll look at some of the generative learning strategies a process where each revision technique can lead to another and ensure that information is learnt. So in English, we would ask students to mind map about characters or themes and get them to make links, use quotations and use their information to describe or briefly analyse. By using mark schemes, they can see the information needed to get their target grade and try to ensure they cover the skills needed. Self-explanation, so being able to discuss characters and themes, and this will apply to many subjects as well as English. Also, we encourage them to test with flashcards, produce presentations, character profiles, context research, reuse lesson titles, synonyms and vocabulary links, and get your friends and family to test you. One of the most effective ways to revise is to use flashcards. So we encourage students to set up a title question on one side and a summary analysis on the other. They can use questions to apply knowledge as opposed to memorising information. And the great news is parents can help with these as they can ask questions and check that the student knows the answers on the back. An example of flashcards are here and this is how they could work for you. We also encourage self-explanations so students can produce presentations, character profiles, context research reusing lesson titles, synonyms and vocabulary links, and again, getting family and friends to test them on their knowledge. Summarising and self-testing is another revision technique we go over at school. So learning quotations in English, use the question stems to make up your own questions, use the mark scheme to help you understand your targets and to reflect on your own work. One of the best ways to revise is past papers. Teachers will be going over past papers in classes and will provide some for revision, and these are invaluable. Writing answers, practicing timing and using the mark schemes are all brilliant ways to revise. When it comes to English language, modifying to real life, that means using every te day text around you to practice English. So reading newspapers, using photos or images you come across as stimulus for descriptive writing, for narrative writing, looking at headlines or blurbs to kickstart a story. Writing for real in the mocks coming up, paper two, section B is all about writing for real, so letters and speeches. Applying character themes, context to anything you watch. Use songs and music to practice your analysis and comparison of poetry. When it comes to maths, obviously different techniques will be used. But in lessons, students will have already had a look at mock question analysis to work out their strengths and weaknesses. When they have done that, they will have been able to look at their red, amber and green topics. The red topics are the topics that require the most work for them and the most revision. And this provides a tailored revision list to every student. They are then able to go onto Hegarty Maths, where they can search for the questions that they are weakest in and learn about how to answer them at home. So please do keep in touch. Um, as always, speak to staff with any questions or queries. On Teams, students will have access to their mock timetable, the What to Revise guide, and lots of revision tips. Teachers will also provide revision resources and useful links to websites. So please do keep in touch, contact your, your tutors, um, and let us know of any information you think the teachers should know. And I'm now going to hand over to Mrs Linham, who will be talking about how we support students with post-SWR options. Hello and uh, my name is Mrs Linham, I'm the assistant head teacher looking at personal development and I have been in touch with many of you already about your child's post-16 options. Um, your child should be in the throes now of organising their post-16 options and really post-SWR options. We highly encourage every child to have a plan A, a plan B and a plan C when it comes to post-16. To ensure they explore every possible option, your Year 11 child should have or will have a careers interview with Kim, our independent careers advisor. Hopefully, post-16 plans have become a regular discussion 
point at home and your child knows what options are available to them. If they have an idea of what they might like to do in the future, great. This helps pulling plans together so much easier. However, if they don't, don't panic. It really isn't the end of the world. One piece of advice I would give to every student that I speak to and every parent of those students is they need to do something that they enjoy and have an interest in that will make the life post 16 so much easier. You should have received from me already an information sheet outlining all the relevant dates and open evenings. To summarise, there are three main categories of qualifications you can take after GCSEs, vocational, apprenticeship based and academic. They can all lead to higher qualifications, university and the world of work. A-levels are the main academic route. They are achieved after two years of study and there are lots of different subjects to choose from. You can take A-levels alongside vocational courses at some providers. Malmesbury Sixth Form, a school-based system, offers the support, routine and pastoral support many of our students are accustomed to at a time of their life when they are starting to gain a lot more independence. As many of you are aware, we are offering a satellite sixth form provision in collaboration with Malmesbury. Therefore, it doesn't need to necessarily be the end of the road with SWR. You can have the best of both worlds. Marlin, Archway, Stroud High and Rednark are also examples of school-based sixth forms, while Sirencester College is another possible option, for example. A-levels is one of the most common routes into universities, but not the only route. Secondly, there are apprenticeships. Here your child will be out in the workplace four or five days a week and earning a wage, but some of their time will also be spent working towards professional qualifications. Certain types of apprenticeships can also lead to university qualifications. Your child will find out more about apprenticeships when they visit Stroud College soon. Finally, there are vocational qualifications. These are generally offered at our local colleges such as Simon Sester and Stroud. Vocational qualifications are qualifications related to a specific area of employment. For example, if they want to work in the world of care, then they might want to take a health and social care qualification. Vocational qualifications start at different levels. Last September, we saw the introduction of a new type of vocational qualification, T-levels. These are a two-year course. They're equivalent to three A-levels, and students spend 80% of their time in the classroom and 20% based in industry. I'm hoping that your child has managed to get out and visit a few different post-16 providers. Many of the deadlines for applications are coming up over the next month or so. For example, Mom's Breeze is the 15th of December, while Simon Sester is ongoing, so it's worth finding out what the deadlines are for applications. If your child has any questions about post-16, please do encourage them to find me or email me to discuss the plans. Alternatively, by all means yourself, you can contact me as well. Thank you.